if you don't have your own explicit philosophy of technology, that means you have an implicit philosophy of technology that has been given to you largely from just a few dudes in Northern California in Silicon Valley. Uh, you could also hey, Internet Harris here. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a while. And the basic premise is that in order to live meaningful and rich lives today, which I think we all want to do, while including technology, which I think we also want to do, we have to start thinking of technology a little bit differently and recognizing that it's not quite this neutral value thing like it was maybe 17 years ago when the iPhone first came out and didn't have any apps on it at all. We're living in a different world and we need to look at our technology a little bit differently. We need a philosophy of technology. Now I'm going to be pulling a lot of the ideas from this video from Cal Newport's book, Digital Minimalism. Uh, I also really like his book, Deep Work, which basically uh, complements this book and came before it. Um, this one talks about basically we live so much of our time very fractured and unfocused and really the best things in life come from uh, when we're really engaged, whether that is leisure or whether that is work, um, basically when we're just not distracted by 20 emails in an hour or our phone constantly being on us. This book, Digital Minimalism, talks about the lopsided arms race that we are now in. And unlike when the iPhone first came out and you could buy it, not really know why you're using it, and probably not have too many issues, it's become clear over the past 15 years that we are no longer the user of our products, but rather we are the product itself. And all of these social networks that we use are making us the product. And our devices are very intentionally designed to keep us distracted and keep us coming back for more. One of the points that Cal makes in his book is basically that if you don't have your own explicit philosophy of technology, that means you have an implicit philosophy of technology that has been given to you largely from just a few dudes in Northern California in Silicon Valley. Uh, you could also say in China with, with TikTok and these other services. But basically, you know, a lot of what we use our phone, the hardware and the software is designed in a couple miles radius in Northern California. And if you slow down to think about that, those people do not have our best interests in mind. They may claim to, and they may do different uh, PR stunts and, and advertising campaigns to make it seem like they're supporting our values, but, but ultimately they're after money and our attention, which isn't to say that their products cannot be used tremendously uh, effectively and valuably for supporting our values, but that we have to make that conscious effort to look at how is this technology helping and hurting me and that's the whole point. That is the philosophy of technology. You're asking yourself, these devices in my life, how are they helping me? How are they hurting me? And are these small benefits worth the large drawbacks? And with these small benefits, are there ways of replacing that with kind of in real life or in person or physical uh, replacements that would offset and supersede uh, the benefits that the technology gives us? Now, the specific philosophy of technology that Cal suggests would be digital minimalism. And that's one that I like a lot. He defines this as a philosophy of technology use in which you focus your online time on a small number of carefully selected and optimized activities that strongly support things you value and then happily misses out on everything else. It admits upfront that you are going to miss out on some things that you previously appreciated or enjoyed or at least found of some use. And this basically says that, yeah, you're gonna let go of some lower quality things for the sake of higher quality things and that it's going to be okay and you can find peace and joy with that because you're doing it intentionally. Now Cal has three principles. The first is that clutter is costly and he says, digital minimalists recognize that cluttering their time and attention with too many devices, apps, and services creates an overall negative cost that can swamp the small benefits that each individual item provides and isolation. Now for principle number one, he looks at Henry David Thoreau's book, Walden, in which he basically looks at life through a totally new economics or a new way of seeing value and transaction. And he writes, the cost of a thing is the amount of what I will call life, which is required to be exchanged for it immediately or in the long run. And so principle one looks at what exactly is the cost of this in my life? And to say that not all things are created equal. Secondly, optimization is important. Digital minimalists believe that deciding a particular technology supports something they value is only the first step. To truly extract its full potential benefit, it's necessary to think carefully about how they'll use this technology. So for example, for me, a year after graduating undergrad, 
I realized that Facebook actually would be a beneficial tool for me. So I created an account for the first time in something like a decade, but just having a Facebook account is not enough or, or not safe enough really. What I needed to do was recognize what I was using Facebook for, which was Facebook groups. That was the only thing I wanted Facebook for. So I could just bookmark these Facebook groups and just check those groups. And I wouldn't have to go to a timeline at all. Didn't even add any friends. Um, there is friend requests sitting that I haven't touched because I was only there to just check in on valuable Facebook groups for socializing after undergrad. So it was just recognizing that once you decide what technology you're having it back in your life, you just will have to optimize it because by default, any technology is going to try to suck up as much time and resources out of you as it can. So you have to kind of fight back and say, this is how I'm going to use it. This is how I'm going to optimize it. I'm only going to use these functions and maybe I'll just bookmark this uh, part of the website or maybe I'll only use Twitter um, on my computer, or maybe I'll delete the Twitter app and only use twitter.com or x.com. These are the type of optimizations that can really help you still get the benefits out of different technologies without being overwhelmed and smothered back into everything that they're trying to throw at you. And third, intentionality is satisfying. Digital minimalists derive significant satisfaction from their general commitment to being more intentional about how they engage with new technologies. This source of satisfaction is independent of the specific decisions they make, and is one of the biggest reasons that minimalism tends to be immensely meaningful to its practitioners. For principle number three, I like this quote, the sugar high of convenience is fleeting and the sting of missing out dulls rapidly with a meaningful glow that comes from taking charge of what claims your time and attention is something that persists. But simply having a principled life and having principles that you live by makes missing out on things worthwhile because it's for something higher. Or another quote, put simply, minimalists don't mind missing out on small things. What worries them much more is diminishing the larger things that they already know for sure makes a good life. And Cal Newport's book is both theoretical, kind of explaining where we are in the world with technology and distraction, and it's a really convincing argument that he makes. But then also the second half of the book is practical. How do we actually go about changing our lives and our relationship with our technology? And so he recommends adopting digital minimalism, starting with a digital detox. So this detox is 30 days and you can read the book. Uh, I think it's definitely worthwhile. But the idea is that you get rid of almost every piece of technology and social media that you can that doesn't completely kind of ruin your professional life or, or whatever, but get rid of as much as you can. And then after that 30 days, really look back and see what was absolutely essential for you achieving your values that you're looking for and striving after in life. Now, this sounds terrifying, um, and it is pretty difficult. Um, if you saw my last video about my iPhone, I didn't use it for several months in a row, and it was pretty hard at first, but I was also in a supportive environment to kind of help this happen. But regardless, I've come to realize that we can get used to just about anything. Before this technology was around, we all survived. And with this technology out of my life, mostly, mostly all my social media and just my devices usage has gone way down. Uh, I've realized that I am totally capable of getting used to that. Um, and I don't really miss it. So he recommends a 30 day detox and you can see more of his uh, discussion of that in the book, which I do recommend reading. And then after that 30 days, kind of reflecting on how it went and then only re-implementing things that specifically serve your values and your goals and your ideals, and then being explicit with how you're going to use those, including, you know, what time of the day or the week or how often or going to use it only when I'm around these people or for what end those type of questions. Now, the detox is essential for this project, and that's what takes it from a theoretical book to something practical and concrete that will actually change or shape your life. Without the detox, there pretty much is no digital minimalism because it's almost impossible to go from how you currently are and just kind of reshape some things here and there. Those end up being basically band-aids that fall off at some point. So to do the 30-day detox is essential to A, recognize that you can in fact live without this technology to see what it actually feels like to go without it and then eventually to hopefully see well, it's not actually that bad. But then secondly, you start to see what technology you actually do value and why. And once you have that, then you can work it back in as you see fit. What I like about this approach is that it's both top down, starting with your values. What are you actually looking for out of life? What are you actually looking for out of technology and communication? But then also bottom up, 
starting from a somewhat blank slate where most technology is suspect and then only allowing things back in as they support your values and then optimizing them to make sure that it's doing its job the most effective way possible. And doing this actually gives us a really good opportunity to say, what are my values? What do I actually value in life? What do I actually desire? Who are the important people and what are the important relationships and goals and ideals I have in my life? And is my technology actually supporting that and actually moving me closer towards that? Or is it giving me this kind of false pseudo good that makes me feel like I'm constantly connected but really has no real intimacy or, or real human factor. And the final part of this book is something I also really appreciate, and it's recognizing that nature abhors a vacuum. So what are you going to do now with this extra time that you have that you're not wasting on your social media or your additional technology? And that would be high quality leisure, building something with your hands, joining a club, doing something in person, finding a Facebook group, a book club, a reading group, anything like this that puts you in the real world with real people or builds with your hand, these type of high quality leisure that gives a lot of meaning and value to life. As you can tell, I really enjoy this book and subscribe to the idea of digital minimalism. And it's just the idea that if you use your devices without really much consideration today, it's probably going to lead to a worse off life with worse connection with others. Let me know what type of changes that you're gonna apply into your life or maybe how a 30-day detox goes for you. I'll leave a link down in the description to this book if you wanna check it out. Thanks so much for watching.